So the second derivative in this case, we're going to differentiate this again. So I have my function. It's got, uh, it's a rational function. So I'm going to use, to use quotient rule. So my second derivative, differentiating the, I'm going to keep that negative on the outside, differentiating the numerator, and then multiplying by the denominator. Minus, just going to give myself a little bit of room to work. Minus the denom the numerator undifferentiated, so I end up with x squared. And again, I put the negative on the outside just so I don't have to worry about that extra negative. Then it becomes power 2 over 3 comes down. I get 27 minus x cubed to the negative 1 third. And then I have to multiply by negative 3x squared, okay, the inside function. And then I'm going to square that denominator. And so I end up with 27 minus x cubed to the power 4 over 3. Okay, so that makes that denominator positive. This is a fairly messy looking expression. So I'm going to try to simplify some of this. So first of all, I can see that the times 3 divide 3 cancel out. And I have here, I have uh, the negatives, the two negatives here and here are going to make it positive. So I have to be careful about that. So maybe I'm going to do this in a few extra steps. You may want to, you can skip some of these steps. So I'm going to put some extra steps in here. So this becomes 2x. 27 minus x cubed to the power 2 over 3 plus, and then I have 2x squared, uh, sorry, 2x to the power 4, because I have to combine these two powers. Okay, and then I have x to the power, sorry, 27, 27 minus x cubed to the power negative one third all over 27 minus x cubed to the power four over three. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of this uh, negative one third power by multiplying the top by positive one third power and the bottom by positive one third power. And what that will do is it will actually make the two-thirds power into a whole power. So that actually simplifies that expression, gets rid of the root in this portion here. Okay, so I'm going to times the top and bottom by this expression, 27 minus x cubed to the power one-third. That's going to get rid of that negative one-third on the top because that's just going to become power zero and then I have to make sure I introduce it into the denominator like that and this is going to simplify this expression by a lot so I end up with 2x 27 minus x cubed and that now becomes power one plus 2 x to the power 4, that's going to get rid of that negative one-third power. And in the denominator, I end up with 27 minus x cubed to the power 4 over, sorry, 5 over 3. Just going to make that, make sure I get that right. That's to the power 5 over 3, because that's a one-third, four-thirds power plus a one-third power. Okay, so then... I can combine my like terms here. This becomes negative. I have negative, uh, positive, sorry, negative 2x to the power 4 plus 2x to the power 4. That will cancel out. So I'm just left with 54x in the numerator and 27 minus x cubed to the power of 5 over 3 in the denominator. Okay, so that makes this very, uh, it simplifies this quite significantly. Now, that said, this is a fairly algebraically intense uh, calculation. And I don't, 
think this is going to be a typical one. This is, you know, an A level problem of what I what would be expected in Calc 12. Okay, so once I've established that, I know that it's equal to zero at x equals zero. Okay, and we know that it's undefined at x equals three. So I'm going to put this into my chart. So it's equal to zero here. And I have an undefined concavity there. And then testing my concavity chart, f double prime, if I plug negative one into this expression, okay, so I end up with negative on the outside, I end up with negative on the inside, and I'm going to end up with, uh, it looks like that's going to be a negative in the, or sorry, that's going to be a positive in the denominator. Okay, so I end up with positive concavity through negative 1. So at negative 1 here, I have positive concavity. And again, if I take a look at my graph, yeah, that looks like it's positive concavity. At 0, it changes. And you can see the concavity changes. So if I test at x equals 1, I'm going to end up with negative on the outside, positive, and then positive in the denominator. That's going to give me negative concavity through that region. And again, I can see that that definitely is negative concavity in that region. And on the other side of that vertical line, of the vertical tangent, so f double prime at 4, okay, so I end up with negative, that negative on the outside, and then that becomes positive in the numerator. And then in the denominator, because I'm going to do 27 minus 4 cubed, I'm going to end up with a negative in the denominator. And again, that, those are odd powers and roots in the power, so that's going to keep it negative. So I end up with negative, and that gives me positive concavity on the other side. And we can see that clearly that is positive concavity when we get to that side. So we can see the negative concavity in that region and the positive concavity in that region. So this second derivative, it doesn't really give us any extra information. So it's not really that useful to us, but we just want to go through the process of how we, we would find the second derivative. And furthermore, it just emphasizes the point that we, if we can simplify expressions, we want to try to simplify them because it allows us to deal with much simpler uh, expressions in the end. Okay, so that's much more easy, much easier to deal with than that if we don't simplify that.